Good morning and welcome to Will on Safety and welcome to another Toolbox Talk Tuesday. For today's Toolbox Talk, we are going to talk about chemical safety. Okay then. So, there are a few reasons for today's talk. Chemicals are a major part of our everyday life at home, at work and sometimes at play as well. So, examples of chemicals include toxins, corrosives, solvents and numerous other substances. As long as we take proper precautions, these substances can be handled safely. Chemicals that you see at use at home include things like um, petrols, paints, fertilisers, lawn chemicals, you know, bug sprays, paint strippers, uh, kerosenes, bleaches, other household cleaners. So chemicals you might use at a work facility um, are things specifically like solvents, uh, laboratory chemicals, fuels, paints, office copier chemicals, uh, correction fluids, lubricants, corrosives, um, oils, greases, that type of thing. So chemical exposure can occur in four different ways really. So first way is inhalation. So breathing in dusts, mists, vapours. Um, you know, if you're working with bags of concrete or, you know, dust, um, if you're working you know, with those types of things without a respirator, that can lead to inhalation. That can start causing you some issues. Next then, we've got ingestion. So eating contaminated food. Um, you know, drinking a contaminated liquid, for example. So you might be having lunch at work uh, where there are airborne contaminants. It gets into your food. You can then ingest those chemicals. That's really one of the main reasons why a lot of workplaces um, don't allow food and drink on the shop floor. You know, things like water bottles, especially if they haven't got um, labels on them, you know, once they've been discarded, sometimes can be used to hold things like, you know, lube oils or, or different types of chemicals. You know, if they're not labelled correctly, there's potential then for somebody to ingest that uh, without, without knowing what it is. Next up, we've got absorption. So skin contact with a chemical. All right. Um, so that's how you get things like contact dermatitis um, and eye, eye irritations. So... The skin absorbs the chemical, you rub your eyes, um, you, know, you don't wash your hands thoroughly after handling chemicals, that's going to cause you problems in the long run. And then finally we've got injection, so forcing an agent into the body through a needle or high pressure device. Um, a needle, stick or misuse of high pressure washer for example um, can puncture the skin and then that is going to potentially you know, inject um, chemicals into the skin you don't want that there are a number of different ways you can protect yourself against chemical hazards um, and they can include some of the following so reading container labels um, MSDS's so material data sheets um, you know and any sort of instructions before you handle the chemicals they're a, they're really a great source of information they're going to tell you how to best handle it what PPE you need when handling that particular chemical, um, <clears throat> you know, how harmful it is, you know, what to do in a medical emergency. So say you ingest it, you know, what, what's your sort of first steps? So please, please, when you're at the workplace, make sure you read, you know, the chemical risk assessments, the MSDSs and the SDSs. Uh, so make sure they are available at uh, the area where the chemicals are and make sure they're readily available for everybody to use. Uh, using appropriate chemical quantities, ventilation, guarding and other engineering controls. And then we've got using specified PPE, um, <coughs> excuse me, that might include uh, splash proof goggles, respirators, gloves, aprons, uh, steel toed shoes, safety glasses with side shields, uh, maybe a full face shield. Okay, again, the information that you need to proper prepare yourself in terms of what PPE is going to be required is going to be held within those 
uh, cost risk assessments and MSDS forms. So make sure you're just adhering and you're using the appropriate PPE as prescribed um, by that paperwork. All right, you need to ensure proper fit and that you're trained to use your PPE. All right, it's no good, you know, putting a set of uh, safety goggles on or a set of, uh, you know, safety spectacles on, for example. And then what we see is people are kicking about using chemicals and their safety glasses or goggles are somewhere up here. All right, they need to be covering the eyes to protect the eyes. All right, so make sure you're trained and you know how to use them. Inspect your PPE prior to use. Obviously, it's no good uh, using glasses if your lens has fallen out or you've got gloves that aren't appropriate for the job. So maybe you're using the nitrile type gloves and because of the chemicals you're using, you need a much thicker sort of uh, acid resistant glove. All right, all that's going to happen is it'll burn through that, that glove and cause burns to your hands. So you need to make sure you inspect your PPE and you're using the correct PPE. All right. Know the locations of safety showers and eye wash stations and make sure you know how to use them. All right. Safety showers should be tested, uh, so they should all be working. But eye wash stations, all right, make sure that whenever an eye wash station has been used, it gets replenished. It'd be no good. You're getting a load of chemicals in your eye and then you go to use an eye wash station and there's no eye wash bowl there. That'd be a nightmare. So make sure... You know, stocks are replenished as and when you need to use them and make sure you know how to use them. Always worth reading the instructions, okay, just as a matter of course, maybe do it as, a, as some rotational training. What you don't want to happen is, you know, you need to use them and you're like, I've no idea how to use this kit and equipment. So next up, wash your hands before eating, especially after handling chemicals, okay? Good personal hygiene, isn't it? So you've used your sort of chemicals, Make sure you wash your hands afterwards. All right, make sure you're using barrier creams, that type of thing as well. Um, but make sure you thoroughly uh, wash your hands, uh, especially you know if it's lunchtime and you're you're just about to tuck into your sandwiches uh, and brew. Okay, leave contaminated clothing at work um, if it's required, um, and know the location of your facility's uh, SDS sheets. So. Like I said earlier on, your SDS sheets, chemical risk assessments, etc., need to be readily available. Ideally, they'll be at the location where you're going to get the chemicals from, so your chemical store, okay, your cost storage. Make sure you've got your MSDSs uh, there. Okay, so chemicals are all around us. It's easy to become complacent. You know, we use chemicals every day, even in the home. All right, so it's really easy to be complacent against the hazards. So take a fresh look at the chemicals you handle, the hazards and ways to protect yourself from those hazards. If you do that, you know, if you follow those simple steps, uh, you should you know, have no issues. OK, so that's it for today's Toolbox Talk. I hope you found this video uh, interesting. Uh, I hope you've learned something from it. That's the whole uh, point of these Toolbox Talks. If you haven't already, hit that subscription button, hit it now, join my community, Will on Safety, help my community grow. The whole purpose of Will on Safety is just to give no-nonsense information about all things safety, okay? If you want me to cover a specific topic, leave me a comment. I always reply to 100% of the comments. Uh, if you want me to cover something uh, you know, in particular, please let me know. Also, let me know how you find the videos, how I can improve them. Um, what you like about them, what you don't like about them. That's going to help me grow as well. But remember, hit that subscription button. Yeah, hit the notification bell as well. I'm posting at least twice a week. Uh, if you hit that notification bell, it'll let you know when I've posted. That way you're not going to miss any uh, good content. And give me a like. If you find, you know, if you found it useful, you've got friends, family, colleagues in the industry or just in general work in itself, yeah, Share my channel. Please pass the channel around. Get people to subscribe. I appreciate it. Um, but for now, remember, folks, safe by choice and not by chance. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.